Hello everyone, welcome to problem 3.18 of David Griffith's Electrodynamics. So, jumping into the problem, um, part A, it's two parts. Part A says, suppose the potential is constant, V naught, over the surface of a sphere. Use the results of three point, example 3.6 and example 3.7 to find the potential inside and outside the sphere. So, examples 3.6 and 3.7 essentially um, go through the general solution, finding the general solution for the potential inside and outside a hollow sphere. So this is a hollow sphere with a potential along its outer surface uh, that is constant. And those two examples, if you haven't gone through them, I suggest you go through them or else there's going to be some results you don't understand. But um, they solve Laplace's equation for inside and outside regions of the sphere. Um, and so what we have is for inside the sphere, the general solution for Laplace's equation is that the potential is a sum from L equals zero to infinity of A sub, uh, of A sub L, R to the L, and the L Legendre polynomial. And then the coefficient A sub L is given by this. So and this is coming from example 3.6. Um, so A sub L is equal to 2L plus one over two uh, radi times the radius to the lth power times the integral from 0 pi of whatever your potential function is um, v naught of theta which in our case is going to be a constant potential times the lth polynomial in terms of cosine of theta times sine, sine of theta d theta so this integral really what we just need to figure out is what are uh, you know what terms in this series give us our, our potential? And, and given that we know the potential uh, is gonna be constant along the surface of the sphere, then we can plug that into this integral here. And since it's a constant, it's just gonna come out of the integral, so it's a constant. Um, so I pull it out and we just have this integral where I've multiplied by the zero Legendre polynomial because the zero Legendre polynomial is one. So multiplying by one is fine. You can do that. It doesn't change anything and it's valid. So just multiplying that by the, uh, the zero uh, Legendre polynomial, we have this integral where we know that the zeroth polynomial and the lth polynomial, um, the Legendre polynomials are orthonormal to each other, orthogonal. So this integral will only be uh, have a value where L is equal to uh, zero. So if L is anything but zero, this integral will be zero. However, for the case where L is zero, what we get is uh, we'll just be integrating sine of theta d theta, um, which just gives us uh, negative cosine of theta evaluated from zero to pi, which just gives us two. And so this integral here is going to be zero if L is not zero, or two if L is zero, um, meaning that um, in the summation for a potential, you know, we're summing over all else. Uh, the only, but our coefficient, the only coefficient that survives in the sum would be the zero um, term. So we only have a single term for our answer in the summation. So A sub L is just V naught, and, th and that limits the summation on the potential to just be one term. And so the potential inside the sphere is V naught, which is A sub L, and then R to the zeroth power, since the L, the L equals zero term is the only term, uh, which is just one times the zeroth polynomial, Legendre polynomial, which is just one. Okay, so now that we have, that the potential is just equal to V naught. So inside the sphere, we, we found that the potential is just equal to a constant V naught. Now for the outside portion, we, um, from a, this comes from example 3.7 in the book, but in the outside region, the potential is given by this uh, summation. So summation from L equals zero to infinity of B sub L over R to the L plus one times the L Legendre polynomial in terms of cosine theta. And so um, B sub L, it can be given by this expression. So very similar to what we had before. So we have you know, some constants out front, 
times this integral that depends on the potential function, um, some, pot some known potential um, in the region, uh, or some known, the, the potential that is, you know, creating the field or whatever. Uh, so multiplying this term and pulling out uh, the constant V naught, because this function just be constant, so pulling that out, um, and multiplying by P zero. So we just have this integral. And so just like before, this integral is going to be zero if L is not zero, and it's going to be um, two times V naught, considering V naught's pulled out of the integral, if L is zero. And this comes from the orthogony, ortho orthogonality of the Lozandre polynomials. And therefore, if this is the only term that is possible, then that limits our summation for our potential to just the L equals zero term. And so plugging L equals zero into this uh, function here, we just get V naught, which is V sub zero times R. Um, and I believe there's a relationship between, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, here. So B sub naught, I don't think I pointed this out, but B sub naught, the, the zero B term is just V naught R. Um, I believe that just comes from, uh, I thought I wrote that down somewhere. The not. I thought there was a term where one half R two times V naught. Where does that come from? Hang on. I... Okay, so um, B sub zero, if, if you recall, this is what B sub L is, but the only term that we're gonna have is B sub zero. So two L plus one, so that's just gonna be one over two. So we have one over two R to the L plus one, so that's R to the first power times two V naught. So the entire term just evaluates to V naught R, and so plugging V naught R into our equation for the outside potential. We get V naught R all over R to the zero plus one is one over R. And then the first, um, the zero was not your polynomial, which is just one. So we just get V naught R, V naught times the radius all over R. And if you, you know, you can kind of check that this is correct because when R is equal to the radius, meaning uh, at the surface of the shear, you just get V naught, which is what we know the potential should be. And then outside the sphere, it kind of falls off like one over R. So that is part A. Now, there's a part B. Um, it says, find the potential inside and outside a spherical shell that carries a uniform surface charge and use the results of 3.9. So if you haven't done example 3.9, I suggest you do so, um, because I took the starting point uh, for this problem from there. So it's the same exact set, except instead of knowing what the potential is on the surface, we know what the surface charge density is on the surface. And so the potential um, for the two regions, like from before, are given by these two equations. This is for inside the sphere, this is for outside the sphere. And then there's this relationship between B sub L and A sub L, where B sub L is equal to A sub L times R to the 2L plus 1. This is coming from example 3.9. Or, um, you know, uh, and then A sub L is equal to 1 over 2 epsilon naught radius to the L minus 1 times the integral from 0 to pi of the surface charge density function as a function of theta uh, times the L on Legendre polynomial in terms of cosine of theta and then sine of theta d theta. And all of this comes from example 3.9. So this is kind of our starting formulas. If you don't know how these results are derived, go to example 3.9, David Griffiths does a great job. So for a surface charge density of just a constant surface charge density, then A sub L you know, is just everything that we have here, and we pull out the constants from the integral. I forgot to put the balance, which is from zero to pi. And yeah, we just kind of do a similar trick as we've done before. So we multiply by a zeroth Legendre polynomial and we get uh, this, where, of course, this integral is going to be zero unless L is zero. Um, and if it's not, then you get a two. And so the two from this integral would cancel this two on the bottom. And so the total result is that B sub L um, is equal to, or sorry, A sub L, first of all, is equal to 
zero if L is not zero, and sigma naught radius over epsilon um, for L equals zero. And then using this relation, V sub L is sigma naught R squared, radius squared over epsilon naught, because we're just multiplying by R to the two times zero plus one, which is just uh, R. So we have our two um, coefficients, and so our potential then, if you plug them in to here, um, and getting rid of the summations because we only have a, a single term, the potential in terms of the charge density is sigma naught radius over epsilon for uh, r less than the radius, and sigma naught r squared over epsilon times one over r for regions outside the sphere. So it still falls off like one over r as we expect. Um, and then if you want to put this in terms of the total charge Q, well, the charge density is just the total charge Q divided by the surface area of a sphere. Um, so it's Q over four pi, uh, the radius squared. So if I'm rewriting this in terms of Q using this relationship, you get the potential inside is Q over four pi epsilon naught times the radius. So it's, it's constant. And then as you go outside the sphere, it's Q over four pi epsilon naught uh, R, which is something a result we already knew, and this just sort of helps verify the solution to Laplace's equation. All right, so that is it for problem 3.18. If you guys have any questions on what I've done so far, please you know leave a comment, and I'll try to answer it as quickly as possible. So thank you guys, and have a great day.